Hi everyone, it's Natalie from NellieDesign.com. Today we're going to make a project that is longer than what I'm used to, but so satisfying. Not only will we engrave, but we'll also cut in a plastic sheet to end up with a beautiful LED lamp that can have all sorts of design and that can even be changed throughout the year. Okay, so let's start by design space and then we're gonna head to Silhouette Studio Business Edition where I'm gonna do the same thing but with more options. I wanted to make a version of, of it with only Cricut Design Space because I know you guys don't all have Silhouette Studio Business Edition. That means it's you need to pay for it because Business Edition export SVGs. So I have uploaded this design that I bought on Design Bundle site. I will link to it on my blog and this is pretty cute the first thing you want to do is right away is to scale it to at least five inches because i found that five inches is like the the ideal dimension if you want to put it on a light base so you'll see that it has all these layers and to keep this very simple in design space i'm gonna weld them right away so we only have one weld result and one layer when we have that, let's select it and I'll duplicate it for later because we're going to need it. And what I want to do is that it, I want to fill all these shapes with a line that is going to engrave. Because let me show you, let me put them side by side like that. If I put here and I click engrave, this is what's going to be engraved. So it's only the outline. What we want it is to fill this, these shapes with lines so that it engraves and becomes darker. So in order to do that, I made for you a pattern of shapes that are only lines, very close lines. So you're gonna go and get them in the designs library. And after that, you're gonna upload and get them where you save them. They're called .005. That means each line is spaced at 005 inches apart, 0 0.005 inches apart and at 120 degrees so this is the one we're going to take you see it looks like a square but there are actually a lot of little lines here it is and right away if you take this and you cut it at that size Cricut's design space is going to go a bit crazy uh, meaning it won't cut properly it will do just a mess I'm going to put everything on top of each other. We're going to select all and I'm going to multiply by 10. So instead of 6.007, we're going to have 60. So let's remove the dot right here and put another one here. Press enter. So now you see it. It's very, very big and you see all the little lines. We're going to need just one of the, the well result and the SVG file of the lines. And we're going to hit slice now you're gonna see it's gonna take a lot of time so don't worry about it i'm uh, leaving this to you just to show you how much time it takes so that you're you know that it's it's not just you it's really it takes a long time to create a design space to resolve everything and you have this little warning here don't worry about it it just says that the the design is too large for the mat but we're gonna put it back to the right size right after and we still have to wait that the result gets us as usual four layers just like that <laughs> right on time so we have the four layers we're gonna need to keep only one and i keep keeping the red one so you can do the same i'm gonna remove this one remove this one and remove this one but we want to keep this one that we had at the beginning remember when we duplicate it so Selecting both of them, we have 54, 716. We're going to divide by 10, so the dot's going to be right here. So let's put the dot here and remove the dot from the other place and click Enter. So we have both of them back. And now I know that they are, um, both of them, the exact size, because I scaled them and I scaled them back. Now, this seems to be like it was before but it's actually a lot of little lines. Let me just zoom in so you see, you see it a bit. You see that the edge is kind of jagged 
Well, that's because there are all little lines inside. And that's why I kept the other copy. Because, let me zoom out again. <laughs> what we're going to do is select both of them and align them center. So now they are both on top, one on top of each other. And the one that is called engrave right here is going to make the outline of the design so that we have all the little lines inside and an outline. And this one, let me put it back to engrave too. So now we need to put a shape around this message. Let's take a circle and I'm going to unlock it and scale it. Let's see what we can do. Let's send it to back to sh see it better. Now you're probably thinking that these are a lot of steps right away. So I made a printable for you to follow each of the steps and make sure you don't forget anything. All the sizes and the steps will be in this printable. So you can download it from Nelly Designs Library. So because next I need to make a square. The square needs to be one inch high. Let's unlock it. One inch high by 3.125 and when I say 3.125 this is the maximum width of my lead light it might not be what you have so make sure to take the measurements and the one inch is not a total inside of the lead light so from the bottom of the lead light to the first design you have uh, I think one inch is a great spacing so let me sel select both of them and of course I need to align them, <laughs> that's for sure. Here we are. And while they are selected, I'm gonna use weld. So we have our base light, sent to back. So we are ready. And what I should tell you is to save your project right away. <laughs> Let me call it freezing. And then we'll be ready to continue. So here we are in Silhouette Studio Business Edition. Uh, when I say Business Edition, it's because it's the paid version, the uh, higher one. It's because this is the only version that you can export in an SVG file. So of course, if you want to go and cut it with your Cricut and use Silhouette Studio, well, you'll need to export in SVG. So this is kind of a, the same thing as a shortcut a lot. Maybe you know this one too. You can do almost the same thing. But for engraving, there are very cool options in Silhouette Studio that are not in shortcut a lot. And that's what I'm going to show you. Um, so first of all, instead of importing like you do in Design Space, here you, get, you just need to open. So we're going to open and I'm going to find the file that I had that was right here in a bundle that I bought the link will be on my blog and it was called this 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 this, this, this season to be freezing yep. <laughs> so I open it and same thing as in design space it is made of multiple layers so don't move it because you're going to be moving one not the other so right away what I'm going to do I'm going to select all and you can like in design space uh, press and drag I'm going to select all and I'm going to group group is right here it's really similar so they are locked together and now I see that the size it's 11 inches and what I want I want them like I did in design space as about five of width and that's the thing I always forget about Silhouette Studio is that it's the opposite as in the design space, meaning that the lock is always on lock. And in design space, the lock is always lock. <laughs> so I always do that. So let's do undo. Let's click the lock and click five enter. Oh, that's better. <laughs> so zoom in. I can hold alt and rolled my mouse that's what i like a lot too <laughs> and 
what we're going to do here, instead of just drawing a simple circle like we did in Design Space, we're going to use Offset. Very easy to do. Uh, you have the, the shape selected. You're going to click Offset and wait a bit. Now you see the offset is right there. But if you want it a little bit bigger, you just drag the little um, triangle here and just be patient a bit. Sometimes it takes a little long to respawn because it's working hard. <laughs> so I think that could be about it. And make sure you have the corner that are on the circle side and then you click apply. And then it's going to merge everything together like if you would weld them and you are left with one shape. Now, what I want to tell you is that if the offset leaves some little holes in here, you can select this tool and go and click the knot and remove the knot. But the knot would be in the middle right here and you just remove them until you have no more holes. Now, we don't have any holes here, so that's totally cool. And what I'm going to do, though, is select this. This will simplify the nodes. Just look at them. And you see there are now way less nodes. This will be simpler for a Cricut design space and your Cricut to cut it. Once this is done, we're going to draw a rectangle just like we did in design space and the same size. So I was telling you, let's unlock this one because we don't want to get mixed up. 3.125 wide by one inch high. This is what we have. Let's take the arrow and move it down a bit. Let me just zoom out. So we just move it and let's move it to the bottom of the design. You see that it's kind of magnetic. So I, I really like that. And it's telling me that it's centered. So I don't even have to, to do anything. Pretty cool. So <laughs> I'm going to select both of them and I am going to weld like we do in design space. So we need to open this menu. Let me just put it back up here. And you see you have also weld. Now the fun part. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm going to select this and I'm going to ungroup it because I want to show you all the things you can do. So ungroup is right here. Now you see they're all ungroup. And this menu right here is called line effect. I don't even have to remember which one is which because I know the little symbol here it talks to me a lot. <laughs> so Silhouette Studio has all of these options and Shurkat a lot only has like this one and this one. So I think it's pretty fun because I'm going to show you what you can do with them. And what I want you to think about is which word would you like to be the darkest? Which word would you like to see the most? So this one is going to be, I think, season and freezing would be the, the two words that you want them to stand out more. So let's take season and I'm going to select all the letters because they are all separated. I think I've got them all. I think so. Okay. And let's try this one. So each time you're going to do this, they're going to turn to red. But don't worry about it. What I suggest is that you don't leave them horizontal at zero degree angle because it's not really pretty. So we're going to use 120. That's what I like to use. Either 60 or 120. It's I think it, it does a great result. And of course, we don't want the spacing. So we need to pull this arrow to the end at 005 inches. And you see, it's almost like it's filled completely. Now I'm gonna show you something that is pretty fun. Um, let me go just here into our preference panel. And instead of white as a background, we're gonna choose black. This is gonna enable us to see kind of like it would be engraved. So let me select all. And then instead of red, we're going to put white. So if I would leave it like that, this is how it would be. It would engrave the, the outline like this and it would appear like that. Also, let me come back to season because I didn't put it to 005. But what I forgot to do is to put the outline, the edge effect. And you see it made a little difference. I don't know if you see it. If I go closer, you see all the little lines. Well, if I fit no edge and with an edge. So in design space, you need to copy your design in order to add the edge. But here is as simple as a little click. So that is fun. So I'm I think I'm going to put freeze in the same line effect 
again it goes back to red but don't worry about it let's just go like this 120 and there's the little r that i'm and 20 i forgot the outline again the edge here it is here we go okay let's put let's put it white i don't like to see it red i think it uh, it makes my eye to see very uh, much better what it's going to look like when it's when it's white like that now let me show you the thing i really like the thing i prefer is when i have those kind of lines those curvy lines that I use this one only edge but instead of a straight edge I use this edge so it makes let me zoom in to show you it will go multiple times but not one on top of the other and it makes a really beautiful design when you use it so let me select all of them and use this and I'm gonna go to this one there's one you can use too for it's the circle one. You see what's gonna do? <laughs> that can be really fun. I did that with snowflakes before. It was like I had many snowflakes one on top of the other. But for this case, I think I like this one. You see, there's also this one, but that might be a bit too much. <laughs> and there's this one, and there's this one. So you can really choose which one you like. I think they're all pretty. Uh, there's a little circle here that I forgot. Let's put it like that way. I think I'm going to put these little lines too. Same thing. So now I'm going to fill the 2B. I think it, I could use a fill pattern a little bit less. With less spacing. So I was at 0 0.005. Let's put it at 0.10. And you'll see, let's put the edge there and let's see what it does when it's white. So you have a good impression of what it's going to look like. This is going to be darker and you're going to see less of this one. So let's try this one and let's put it like instead of 0.5, let's put it at 0.15. I'm going to put it white. Okay, I forgot the outline. Can you see that we forgot the outline on this one? Yep. So now you can really see that these one are darker, this one, these one are lighter, and this one is even lighter. So when you go like this, you can really play around and make some words uh, come out more than the other ones. Last but not least, uh, these one I'm going to leave them like that, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to select them. Since I'm leaving them like that, I still want them to be really um, harder than just one pass. So I'm going to duplicate them and I'm going to put them one on top of the other. And again, it aligns perfectly on their own. So Cricut is going to go twice over these ones, so it's, they're going to look darker afterwards. One thing I want to show you too, if you even want to go darker than this, you could select this one instead of this one. But since it's twice the pattern, it goes into that way and that way, well, it's going to take like twice the time. So I think that I'm okay with this one for, for now. And you'll see, you can test it wherever you want. So already with this pattern and all of what we did, it might take the engraving close to two hours so let's see how it does and i think that with this pattern it will be totally fine and totally perfect so let's save it as an svg the only thing you need to do in the silhouette studio is go here and say save as save to our drive and here in the file uh, type you're going to select svg and so just before you close Silhouette Studio, uh, there's kind of a little bug when you export an SVG from Silhouette Studio to Cricut Design Space. The size of the object is not correct. So before you close Silhouette Studio, you want to select all. So you can go here and edit and select all or use Control A. Group everything. And then you're going to have the size of the whole object. So let's write down 5.767. And make sure we use it in Cricut Design Space to scale back our design. Oh, 
Okay, so here we are back in Cricut Design Space. There are multiple ways you can cut and engrave your plastic. There's one that you do that will engrave and then cut the shape right away. But when I tried making this, um, Cricut Design Space just froze and I ended up having engraved for like an hour and a half and then my knife blade wouldn't cut. It just did one pass and then it stopped. So this is very frustrating and from now on I decided to go the other way. So the other way is using a jig. A jig is kind of a template you use to cut at a specific place on your mat. And for that we're going to use the print and cut feature and the eye of the Cricut that will read the line around the print and cut to really know where your plastic is and where it needs to engrave. Well, So first thing we're going to do, we're going to make the jig. So for that, we're going to upload the file that we made in uh, Silhouette Studio. And I can tell you that it's the same thing if you're using the file that we made in Cricut Design Space. The only difference is that instead of uploading the image like we're doing right here, is you're going to open the project. So first thing to do, same thing if you're in Cricut Design Space, you're going to flip your image just to make sure that we engrave on the back of the plastic. So when we look at it in front, it's better that way. It's more beautiful. Second thing, like I told you, there's a little bug from Silhouette Studio to Cricut Design Space and our image is tiny. We didn't make it at two inch wide. We have to check what we wrote down and just enter the size of the width right here. So it's 5.767, enter. And now we're at the right size. I didn't ungroup anything yet because first we're going to draw a rectangle. So this rectangle, it's a square actually. So when I refer to it in the printable that I will give you that you can uh, download from Nelly Designs Library, when I say square, this is what I'm referring to. It's the layer that is called square. So I unlock it and I will be sizing it the exact size of the maximum size that you can do when you do a print and cut. So that's 6.75 and a height of 9.25. Then I select all and I align center. Then I'm going to select only the square and I'm going to change the line type to draw. This is going to be used to draw a rectangle all around our shape and to center this shape in the side of the print and cut area. It also will tell us uh, the distance that is the maximum where to put our tape when we're going to be uh, engraving. So you'll see later when I show it to you when we make it. But if you don't have any pen, don't worry about it. You can just still put this one, make sure it's centered. It will just what they call air draw. So it will not draw a line, but the pen will move without any pen inside and it will air draw a rectangle. So that's totally fine if you don't have any pen. Okay, so now we're going to select this group and we know we want to engrave. So instead of cut, we're going to engrave it. But I would like to unselect this one, but it doesn't seem it wants to. So <laughs> what we're going to do, we're going to select and we're going to go to engrave. And then I'm going to ungroup and go all the way down and reselect this one and put back cut because we really do want to cut it. So before I make any mistake, I want to make sure this stays in center and everything stays in place. So I'm going to select all and I'm going to group back everything. So I want to make sure I don't move anything since because this is totally me. I always do some things like that and I end up with something at the wrong place. <laughs> so now I'm going to select this shape. When I say a shape, in the printable, I really mean the shape that is the one that we're going to cut with the knife blade. So let's find it all the way at the bottom. It's right here. And for the jig, we want to print and cut this one. So we have cut here and we're going to select here print. So it becomes white. But we don't necessarily need to print this or engrave this right away. So what we're going to do, let's select all. And we're going to close the eye of the group so everything closes down and we're going to just open back up this little one and this little one because those are the only one we need for this step. 
Last thing, last thing we need to do, let's not forget, select a group and click attach. Don't forget to save your project. I, it's really important. Let's write season to be freezing. Because all the steps you have make, you don't want a Cricut Design Space to bug and you'll have to do this all over again. So once it's saved, you click make it. So you see our rectangle, our square is, will be drawing this, the maximum size that you can for a print and cut. And then it's going to cut the shape inside. We don't see it right now, but we see it's print, draw and cut. So let's continue. We're going to send it to printer. Now I'm going to make like I've already printed so I can show you the next steps. We're going to select the cardstock that you have. I suggest that you take a thicker cardstock because later we'll be putting it on the purple mat. And the purple mat, if you only take a simple uh, printer paper, you'll see that it's really a pain to get out of the purple mat afterwards. So let's select medium cardstock and then it's going to draw with the pen and cut with your fine point blade. So the next step we have to make is to cut the shape in our craft plastic. So what you need to do is simply to come here and close the eye of the square. So we're only left with this shape, but now we don't want to print and cut. We want to, we want to simply cut it. So we're going to select it and put the fill instead of print, put it back to no fill. It's as easy as that. Then we're going to hit make it and we're going to continue in material. You're going to browse all material and you're going to select basswood. So I'm going to type in bass and here and I'm going to be selecting one and sixteen of an inch. It's all written in your printable. So it says to move the star wheels all the way to the right, but the craft plastic that I'm using is the 0 0.02. So you don't need to put the star wheels all the way to the right. It, it will fit under the, the star wheel. And make sure you're using your knife blade. The plastic sheets are 12 by 12, so you can easily make three or even four designs. You'll need to secure the plastic sheet to your purple mat with tape. I'm only taping the left side and the top because the sheets are big enough and I'm only cutting to the top left section. Also, it will enable me to check if it has cut all the way through before unloading the mat. As a matter of fact, this setting will make 14 passes, but you'll need to stop it on the 9th or 10th pass. When Design Space indicates that the 9th or 10th pass is done, Press pause and lift the plastic to make sure it went all the way through. If it didn't, click on the Cricut button to add a couple more passes. And if it did, just unload the mat. We are finally ready to engrave. The first thing to do is to take the jig we made using the print and cut and place it on your purple mat. Then, take the plastic piece we just cut and insert it inside of the jig so it fits the shape perfectly. Don't forget to remove the protective film that is on top of the plastic because we don't want to engrave it by mistake. To make sure the shape sticks there, I am using a brayer to press it firmly down. You can really see through the plastic that it makes a big difference with the brayer. And you know what? It doesn't get any fingerprints on the plastic, so we like that. <laughs> also, if your purple mat is not that sticky anymore, or if you don't have a purple mat, you can use double-sided tape. There's one specially made not to leave any residue on the plastic. 
I'll put the link on my blog so you know which one it is. You also need to add tape all around of your shape. If you have painter's tape, it's better because it won't leave any residue on your plastic. Now, if you watch closely, this is when the rectangle the Cricut draw with the pen becomes very useful. I use it to make sure I don't put tape too close to the thicker black rectangle because that could interfere when the Cricut reads the rectangle to know where the shape is. Now we only have to insert the engraving tip, that's the number 41, and we're ready to finalize everything in Design Space. So we're up to the engraving step, and it is still complicated, so I'm hopefully I have downloaded my step-by-step -step, uh, printable. And um, the reason why it's still complicated is that we have to trick Cricut Design Space into thinking we're going to do a print and cut. But actually, we're going to use the jig that we did before. So it's going to read the jig we did before and engrave exactly inside this shape. So in order to do this, I suggest you save your file with another name, like make a save as and use a number one or number two or whatever and save it to make sure that you can come back to this step because once we're going to do what we're about to do, you won't be able to go back. So if you want to cut it another time, make sure you have your two files saved in your projects. So first step, we need to select everything and open the eye. So I need to click twice on this. So everything is back to open. Then we're going to detach and we're going to ungroup. So select back this and ungroup. Now you want to make sure you don't touch anything because it Really, you don't want to move anything. So we're going to select the square from the layer panel to make sure we don't move it. That's totally me. And we're going to set it back to cut. Then using shift, I'm going to select the shape we have here and I'm going to flatten. it. This is why I'm telling you that you might not be able to go back once that is done. Now I like to see what I'm doing. so. <laughs> Just for fun, I'm going to move that backward because I like that backward, but move that to the back, send it to the back to make sure I see everything. And I'm going to select all and click attach so that nothing moves. So we're ready to make it. Now we're going to click on make it. And this is where Cricut is going to print, engrave and cut. But it's not actually going to print because we're not going to click continue. And when it's time to send it to the printer, we're going to tell it that I've already printed. So we're going to be here choosing the material being at step two, that is engrave. So to engrave, we're going to select. So we're going to be searching for tooling letter 6.7. So I'm done. And you see it asks for the engraving tip. And again, it says to move the star wheel, but like I said, you don't really have to do it if you have the same uh, size of craft plastic that I have. And when it prompts you to cut, you only have to eject the mat. That's the only thing you need to do. You won't have to cut anything. So really important tips. Make sure before you start engraving that one, you're not using the Bluetooth, but that your Cricut is plugged into your computer. We don't want any interruption, so you need also to have your computer plugged in. Make sure you disable sleep on your computer because you don't want it to stop. If your computer goes to sleep, the engraving will stop and you don't want that. These are very important. Make sure you do that because engraving will take you at least an hour and a half to two hours. So thinking that we just printed, the Cricut is going to read the thick black rectangle and will therefore know where our shape is because everything stayed in place since we printed the jig. Both versions took around two hours each to engrave, so don't be surprised. 
That's why it's important to make sure your computer is plugged in and sleep is deactivated. Now, we only need to remove the tape and try not to put our fingers in the plastic. <laughs> to remove any engraving residue, you can use compressed gas duster or just put your engraving under running water and let it dry. I sometimes also use a brush, just don't use tissue paper or scott towels because little pieces of fibers will stay attached to the engraving. The last step we have to make is to add some stickers, or anything that can fill the gap in the light base. The important part is to add the stickers on the side of the engraving to make sure the light comes from the back. So even if it's not acrylic, it still makes a beautiful result. Take a look at all the ones I made. This one made with Silhouette Studio Business Edition and also the version made with Cricut Design Space. You can also see all the other ones I made. I really had fun making them. I know there are a lot of steps, but the longest one is done by your Cricut. And the more you make, the more we get used to all the steps and the less we need to look at the printable. But I still encourage you to download my free step-by-step -step printable that will help you make your first LED light engraving and maybe make more, like for all the occasion throughout the year. If you liked this tutorial, give me a thumbs up and we'll see each other soon. Bye bye!